All right. Hello, everyone. I see we have some people joining us for the live stream session today. I'm just, I'm just going to wait a few more minutes and wait for a few more participants to join just because some people might be having trouble getting on. How is everyone doing today? Let me know in the chat. Are you excited to see the experiment today? Are you enjoying the sunny day so far? I want to know how you folks are feeling. So let me know in the chat. I know I am pretty excited to do this session with you folks today. It's a pretty cool experiment. It's pretty simple, something that you guys will be able to uh, follow along with. And then once the recording is sent out uh, to your parents in an email at the end of this session, you are welcome to try and do it yourself and maybe experiment with a few different materials that I didn't use today. Um, if you have the materials uh, with you right now, you're welcome to follow along, but it might be a little rushed um, just because I might be using materials a little differently than you or have a, a few different materials that you may not have. So I see a lot of people are feeling good today. That is awesome. I am feeling happy, excited. I'm loving the sunny weather today. It's super nice out. Uh -huh. Hello to everyone that's joining. Just gonna check our participant list and see. See, we have quite a few people joining, so I'm just gonna wait a few more minutes. Hello, hello, hello. I see a few familiar names in the uh, participants, which is awesome. I see a couple folks who have been uh, in my for girl session. A few have been in my STEM club. I think I see some names from uh, my science camp back in the summer. So it's cool to see all of you folks tuning in today. We still have a few more joining, so I'm just going to wait another minute or two before we actually get started with the experiment and talking about what we're going to do today. Okay, folks, so I'm going to get started here because it's 10.05 and I want to get through the session with you folks. So uh, just a couple ground rules for today. We want to make sure that our chat is appropriate and everyone is uh, talking about science and treating this as if it was a classroom at your school. So we're going to be super nice and respectful to everyone because everyone is here to learn today. Um, that includes not spamming the chat uh, after the session starts. So once I start presenting, if you folks could just stop sending messages in the chat, there will be a few times where I ask you questions. You're welcome to send chats then, but I will let you know when to stop just because I do get a little notification uh, while I'm speaking that there are chats coming up and I just don't want to be distracted and I want to make sure that you folks get all of uh, the best experience that you can get out of this. So if you are uh, joining and you see that down at the bottom, you do have a mic and video option, please do not turn it on because uh, we do not want you folks to kind of interrupt the uh, video session that's happening where I'm presenting and everyone can see my face. If you end up turning those on, you might uh, bump me out. So make sure those are turned off. Um, if there are any inappropriate things being said in the chat, just know that all of the moderators that are on today, all of the super staff that are joining me and helping me can see that and we will be dealing with any inappropriate behavior and you will be asked to leave. Um, at any point, if you folks have questions, you can send it in the chat. I will do my best to answer any questions. Um, if it's technical or you're having trouble with it, uh, one of the moderators will work to help you figure that out. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be denaturing egg proteins. Uh, it's a fun little experiment, really simple. doesn't require a lot of ingredients. It can be done at home. 
I was telling the folks uh, that were here earlier, maybe if you just joined, you didn't hear this, but you do not have to do the experiment with me right now. Um, you might find it a little rushed. If you do, this recording will be sent out to everyone afterwards, and you are welcome to follow along at your own pace then. Um, I do have another STEM club instructor with me today. His name is Tanner. So maybe if Tanner can hop on and say hello to everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Tanner. Uh, so I'll be the moderator. So I'll be uh, kind of helping you guys in the chat when you have questions and all that while Clayton is uh, instructing. So I'll be there to help if you have any questions or when you raise your hand, I'll be there for you. Hi, awesome. Josh. <laughs> Thank you, Tanner. Nicholas is wondering what is a staff? A staff is just someone who works at Supernova. So any of the instructors or moderators that are going to be working with me today. Okay, so I'm going to start getting into some information with you folks. So if you could just stop uh, typing in the chat, that would be amazing. I, ha I have a uh, thing I want you to think about right off the bat, and is where do we get proteins? Think about where in your life do you get protein from? You can actually send me a message or send everyone a message in the chat and give me an example where you might find some protein. And if I see any that are correct, I might shout them out. Mercer said, from the food we eat, absolutely. Can anyone, oh, I see someone said meat, yes. Egg, obviously, that's what we're doing today. Food, yes. One of our Supernova staff members, Hillary, said beans. Those are an excellent source of protein that are meat alternatives. Vince also said alternative, which is good. Sadie said bugs. I didn't think anyone was going to say this. Emily also said insects. I didn't think any of the participants would think of that one today, but bugs and insects are actually a great source of protein, and there are people that do eat bugs. Um, some people have varying diets and uh, varying comfort levels when uh, finding different protein sources. So bugs and insects are absolutely a uh, great source of protein. Milk, yeah, milk is a good source of protein. I see someone said nuts and seeds, tofu, peanut butter, fish. There's lots of different sources coming in here. Those are all definitely applicable. Chicken, yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna close the question period right now. Uh, so we're going to stop typing. All of those answers are absolutely correct. What we're gonna be focusing on Today though is egg whites. So if you're not familiar with what an egg white is, it's the part of the egg that surrounds the yolk. It's kind of a clear, slimy consistency. It might have a little bit of a yellowish tinge to it, um, but they're called egg whites because when you fry them, they turn white. Um, thing about them that you might not know is that they act as the protective barrier around the yolk. So whatever creature is growing inside of that egg is protected by this slimy layer of egg white. In my uh, experiment today, I am using chicken eggs. So if the eggs were allowed to hatch, a chicken would grow out of it because they were protected by the egg white. So we're going to be denaturing these proteins today. Does anyone know what the term denaturing means? If you do, throw it in the chat. I wanna see if you folks can uh, guess what it is or if you know what it is, just shout it out. So denaturing proteins. Anyone have any ideas? Ella got it pretty much right off the bat with breaking down. Mercer also said uncovering DNA. CD said taking it apart. These are all really good guesses and you are all pretty spot on. So what denaturing means is that you are changing the characteristic properties of something. So with proteins, they come in uh, a variety of shapes, but the ones that we see in egg whites, they are all folded up. They might look like a scrunched up rubber band or a pile of string, or maybe if you think about a pile of headphones that are all tangled, that's what egg white proteins 
teens look like when they are not denatured. And what we are going to do today is denature them. So we're going to break those bonds and allow them to unfold into more of a long string-like uh, conformation, which means we're denaturing it, we're changing the characteristics of it. Um, so pro like I said about proteins, they have this shape that kind of looks like a rubber band. Can anyone think why these proteins might be all bunched up, scrunched up, looking like a scrunched up rubber band? Can anyone think of why they have that shape to begin with? Throw it in the chat if you have any guesses. Give folks a few more seconds to guess here. A couple people are asking if that is to fit in the egg. Not necessarily. If you think about proteins, they're really, really small. They're on a cellular level. So often to see proteins, you need a microscope to see them when they are not denatured. So think even smaller than that. To hold together, that's a really good guess. That uh, the shape, the scrunched up shape, definitely helps fold them all together, hold them together. There's one thing I'm looking for though that no one has guessed yet. Yes, Ella, to be protected. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So when you have a protein and it's all bunched together, it helps protect the material that's inside or help protect that genetic uh, information that we need. Something else that is tightly wound is our DNA. So it has a double helix shape and it's really tightly coiled together. And that's also to protect its shape. So it's something we see across a bunch of different biological um, mechanisms, processes. Um, so we talked about how denaturing the egg protein allows it to kind of fold out into a long string-like shape. What happens after that, after it's been kind of broken apart, you need, it comes together and kind of conglomerates not into the same shape it was before with the scrunched up uh, rubber band shape, but think of if you had a bunch of pieces of long string and you just kind of laid them on top of each other. That's what happens after proteins get denatured. If they're not able to go back to their original shape, they just kind of form this new form, this new conformation where it uh, is a lot larger and more expanded than before. So I have a question in the chat, does everyone have different DNA? Yes, everyone does have different DNA. Um, so I talked about denaturing egg proteins. Can anyone think of one way that we denature egg proteins? It's pretty common and you folks may have done it before. So shout it out in the chat if you have any ideas on a common way to denature egg proteins. Alice said fry it. Yes, absolutely. Lily said breaking them. Both are really good examples. Boiling it, absolutely. So when you cook an egg, what happens is the heat actually breaks down the hydrogen bonds that are present inside of it. And that allows the proteins to unfold into that long string shape I was talking about. And they go from that clear liquidy kind of consistency and they turn pretty rubbery and solid and turn white. And that's because we're changing the characteristic um, properties of that egg. Um, and Lily said breaking them. That is also an example. So if you were to like scramble them up or shake them up a lot, you would notice a change color, potentially consistency. That's also another way of changing the uh, protein conformation or denaturing them. So the folks who are in my STEM club know that we have been playing with acids and bases this week. So I'm going to use a few acids and a few bases today, and I'm also going to use a solvent in an inorganic salt. And we're going to be adding these to a cup of egg white, and we're going to see what happens to them. What we're hoping is going to happen is the proteins are going to denature and they're going to form into something that we can see, some new consistency, some new substance. So 
um, we're going to, by adding these substances, we're going to break down the cellular membranes, hopefully. Not all of them might work. And when you break down the cellular membranes or break down the nuclear membranes, that protein is allowed to come out and flow freely into our solution and unfold and form that new uh, confirmation that we're looking for. Just a note, folks, uh, if I'm not asking questions, just keep the chat a little calm just because I am getting all these notifications while I am presenting. We want to remain appropriate and uh, whoever has the floor should be the only one speaking. So when I give it back to you folks, you're welcome to type in the chat. So um, before I get into adding all of my ingredients to my egg whites, there is another form of denaturing proteins with egg whites that I'm not going to do today, but you folks might have done in the past. It's not cooking them and it's not frying them. Uh, if there are any people who like baking in the session, you might have done this before. Um, so if you have a guess at what I'm talking about, throw it in the chat. So you do this to egg whites when you're baking. Mixing them, that's a good, good guess, but now I'm looking for, Mary-Kate said whip. So if you whip egg whites or you beat egg whites, what happens is you see this foamy, foamy consistency uh, form. So good job, Mary-Kate, you got it. So I'm gonna close the chat and close the question session on that one so everyone can listen now. So when you start beating those egg whites or start whipping those egg whites, that's when you start to see peaks form and that's because you're changing the conformation of the proteins and it's forming into a matrix, which is why we get this big fluffy uh, consistency. But if you keep whipping them or you keep beating them, what's gonna happen is that matrix is gonna break down and it's gonna further change form and further denature. And it's gonna turn into this really grainy, watery consistency that we do not like. So I am going to start the experiment and I'm gonna show you what materials I am going to be using today. So remember, I'm using acids, I'm using bases, I'm using a solvent, and I'm using an inorganic salt. I am going to ask you folks what you think every material is before we use it, and I will tell you if you are correct. The first one that I'm going to use is just a glass of cold water. This isn't an acid, it isn't a base, it isn't a solvent, it isn't an inorganic salt, it's just water, so you don't have to guess on this one. And I also have this cup of egg white. So you folks should be able to see this kind of clear liquidy solution, this protein that's inside of this glass. And I'm gonna add this cold water to it. And I want you folks to guess what's gonna happen when I add cold water to this egg white protein. Just throw it in the chat. So someone guesses that it won't mix. There's a good chance it won't mix. Water and egg whites have different densities, so they might lay on top of each other. You think the egg white will stay in the bottom, stay separate? Absolutely. Really good guesses. Someone thinks it's going to turn white. That's an interesting guess, because that's what we want to happen today, because we want to break down these proteins. So a lot of people are guessing they're going to stay separate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the cold water now in front of the camera and allow you folks to see it. So as I add this cold water into my cup, I'm going to add a lot of it so you guys can see. What's happening is we're not seeing mixing. So the egg white and the water is staying separate. So a lot of you have guessed that it uh, will not thing. You are absolutely correct. But a lot of you may be saying, oh, I've added egg protein, egg white to hot water before, and I saw it turn white. So maybe if you've poached an egg, you've seen it go in water and change conformation. But there's a difference there, which is temperature. So the cold water doesn't have the properties to, to break down the uh, hydrogen bonds that are present in egg whites. So hot water does have that, which is why they turn white and they cook in hot water, but cold water doesn't have that. So they are not able to break down those membranes and cause those proteins to denature. So Lily says she can't really see the difference, 
that is good because there isn't really much of a difference. I'll hold it close to the camera. You can kind of see the egg whites suspended in the water here, but not much else is happening. I'm going to move on to my next ingredient, which is a cup of water with baking soda mixed into it. So this is a baking soda solution. Can you guys guess if this is an acid, a base, a solvent, or an inorganic salt? This cup of baking soda solution. So right off the bat, someone got it. It is a base. A couple of people are asking that it's, if it's an acid. It is not an acid. It will neutralize an acid, though. It is a base. So the fun thing about bases is that they act like acids when they are strong. So they also break things down. So if you folks think about soap, soap breaks down all of those grime molecules on our hands. And soap is actually a base. Baking soda is a bit stronger, though, and that's why I'm using it. It has more potential to break down those cellular membranes. So what do you folks think is going to happen when I add this base or a basic solution to my egg white? Any guesses? Someone thinks there will be bubbles in the water plus the egg white. That is a great guess, definitely a possibility. Hmm, any more guesses on what's gonna happen? So some folks are adding, asking what I'm adding. I'm adding a baking soda solution. So this is just baking soda mixed in water. So Mary Kay thinks it's going to turn white. So I'm going to add it and we're going to see what happens. So I have my egg white with nothing added to it, my baking soda solution. So I'm adding that right now. And what you're going to notice is that nothing really happens here. The egg white and the solution still stay, stay separate. The reason being is that the baking soda mixed in the water is not strong enough, similar to the cold water, to break those bonds, break those membranes down, and allow the proteins to denature. So just so folks can see it again, the egg white and the baking soda solution are not denaturing and are not mixing. Someone, some of you are saying that the protein floated to the top. That's absolutely correct. So with the protein and the baking soda solution, uh, they have different densities. So in the cold water, the egg stayed on the bottom. But in this case, the water was a little bit warmer and there was baking soda added to it. So that things like that can affect the density. So that is a probably the reason why the egg floated to the top, but otherwise nothing happened here and we're not seeing any uh, proteins denature or form. So if someone is asking if the baking soda mixed with it, no, it did not mix with it. It mixed with the water, but it did not mix with the egg protein. So I have another fun ingredient that I'm going to use now. Some of you may have this as a treat from time to time which is just a can of pop. And I'm going to add this to the egg whites. I want you folks to guess if this is an acid, a base, an or inorganic salt, or a solvent. So everyone is saying acid. You folks are absolutely correct. So the fun thing about pop, especially dark pop and other carbonated beverages is that they contain an ingredient called phosphoric acid. And like the name suggests, phosphoric acid is an acid. So it makes the pop have an overall pH, um, an overall acidic pH. So what do you folks think is going to happen when I add this pop to the egg white? A lot of people are saying it's going to bubble and fizz. You're probably correct the acid will break it down. That's a really good guess. So what we wanna see is we want to see 
these white strands form, kind of similar to how we would cook an egg because we want to see those proteins be denatured. So I'm going to add the pop to the egg white now. This is another cup of egg white with nothing added to it. So it's the same consistency and same form as the other ones that we've been using. So now I'm going to add the dark pop to it and we're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to give this a few minutes to settle. So there is a bit of foam at the top, which you folks can see. And you might think it changed color, but it really hasn't changed. It's just mixed with a really dark pop. I'm going to hold this pretty close to the camera so you can see. There's these white filaments that are starting to form and float around. It might be a little hard to see on camera just due to the dark color of the pop. But what's happening is the egg white is turning a little more solid and you might be able to see these white filaments kind of form near the top, almost like a layer on top of the pop. But it's not the same consistency as that liquidy clear form that we had at the beginning. It's a little more like, uh, think about like a spider's web almost. Hold it nice and close so you folks can see it there. You might be able to see those strands forming. So what happened there is that the phosphoric acid or the acidic pop was actually strong enough to break down some of the membranes in the egg protein membrane uh, or the egg protein itself and allows that protein to come out and denature and start forming into those long strands that we want to see today. We're going to move on to our next ingredients. Um, the next one I'm going to use is a cup of salt water. So remember I said we had acids, bases, solvents, and inorganic salts. I think you folks should be able to guess what this one is. If it's a cup of salt, it is what? A lot of folks are guessing base, and that's actually not what it is. So salt is an inorganic salt, kind of like the name suggests. Uh, it doesn't behave the same way as an acid or a base does, so it is kind of its own category. So what do you folks think is going to happen when I add this really salty solution to an egg white? Someone guessed that it will taste salty. I am certainly not going to drink it to test that because at Supernova we have a rule that we do not eat or drink science. So a lot of the people are saying that the salt might sink to the bottom. That is a good guess because remember they have different densities. Sophie and David want to know, why do we want to denature proteins? I'm actually going to get into that at the end of the session, so stay tuned to find out why we want to do these things. All right, so a lot of guesses coming in. Some people are guessing that it's going to turn white like we want to. So I'm going to add the salty solution to the egg white, and we're going to see what happens. So again, I just have a cup of egg white here, my salty solution, and I'm just going to mix the two of them together. So a lot of you were correct with the salt water going straight to the bottom and the egg white floating on top. The salt is not strong enough to break down the proteins and denature them like we want to see. But a fun fact about salt is that it's often used in a lot of detergents in other experiments where you break down cellular membranes, but it's usually mixed with a base to make it a little stronger. So if any of you folks have done the experiment where you've uh, extract banana DNA. We use salt and dish soap together to create a detergent to break down cellu cellular membranes. Um, if you haven't done that experiment, you can find it on the Supernova website, and I definitely suggest doing it because it's pretty cool. I'm just going to hold up this cup again to show you folks what we're seeing. We're not seeing any proteins form. We're simply seeing the two, uh, the solution and the egg white separating from each other and not denaturing at all. 
which is not what we want to see. So maybe we should get into some stronger ingredients now. So my next ingredient is vinegar. Can you folks guess if it's an acid, a base, an inorganic salt or a solvent? A lot of people are guessing acid and you are absolutely correct. So what vinegar contains is acetic acid, which is a pretty strong acid. Um, you may have done an experiment in science class where you mixed baking soda and vinegar together, which is an acid in the base, and you will see them foam up and fizz up because they're neutralizing each other because they're built strong acids and bases. So what do you folks think is going to happen when I add this acid to some egg whites? People think it's going to fizz and bubble. Perhaps that might happen. People think it's going to break the egg white down and denature those proteins. Same thing as the pop. People think the egg white will dissolve. Lots of great guesses. I think you folks are on the right track with them. So I'm going to add the vinegar to the egg white and we're going to see what happens. So just like all of the other solutions and materials we've used, I have another cup of egg white and my vinegar, and I'm going to add it and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to hold this nice and close because there is some stuff happening here. Do you all see those white filaments that are starting to form, those white strands? Good, I see a lot of people saying yes, that is good. So the acetic acid is strong enough to break down the proteins and cause them to denature. And that is why we are getting these kind of stringy white filaments towards the top of our cup. So similar to the pop, like a lot of you guessed, the acid was enough to break down the membranes. Just show you folks again. Pretty cool. Now, I have one ingredient left for you folks, which is isopropyl alcohol. Can you folks guess if this is an acid, a base, a solvent, or an inorganic salt? Lots of people are guessing acids and bases. You guys are actually not correct. Oh, I see it. Mary Kate got it. She said a solvent. So that is correct. So isopropyl alcohol acts a little differently than acids and bases do, but it still breaks things down really, really well. So it's known as a solvent, and a solvent just means that it can dissolve a solute, which is something that we would put into a solvent. So if you think about water and juice crystals, in that case, the juice crystals would be a solute, which is what is dissolved, and the water would be a solvent, which is what is dissolving. So I'm going to add this solvent to our final glass of egg white. I want you folks to guess what's going to happen. I think it's going to fizz, perhaps. I think it's going to turn white. I think that's a good guess. Bubble, perhaps. All right, so I'm going to grab my final cup here. I have a tall one for this because I ran out of short glasses. But we have the same egg white in the bottom. And I'm going to add this isopropyl alcohol. I mentioned the banana DNA extraction earlier. If you've done that experiment, you will know that the last step is actually adding this isopropyl alcohol to it to see the banana DNA form. So hopefully we're going to see a very similar process here today. A note about this isopropyl alcohol, if anyone is following along, or perhaps you're going to try this after the video session here, this isopropyl alcohol was kept in the fridge, so it's nice and cold. I know I talked about um, heating eggs up as a way of denaturing them, but cold isopropyl alcohol allows all of those broken down strands to kind of form together and conglomerate. So that's why I keep it cold. 
So I'm going to add it now. I'm going to see what happens. So right off the bat, look at what we're seeing. What color is that, everyone? It is white. That is correct. That is what we wanted to see today. That means I've used the solvent to break down all of the cellular and nuclear membranes that are in the egg white and cause those proteins to denature and unfold. And then the cold isopropyl alcohol actually causes those unfolded strands to come back together and form into this big glob that you're seeing on top of the egg white here. So there is a bit of egg white left at the bottom. If I were to stir this up, it would probably denature all of it because we do have a little bit of isopropyl alcohol left on the top. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll grab my spoon and I'll stir it up and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna stir this up. And what we're seeing is pretty much all of the egg white is becoming denatured and we're getting all of these gooey white strands on the top, which means that most of the egg protein has been denatured, which is what we wanted to do today. So I'm gonna set that to the side. And a lot of you may be wondering why I'm using egg whites today. And the reason is, is because egg whites are super easy to get proteins out of because the conformation of egg white is actually 90% water and 10% protein. So that means that really all egg white is made up of is protein. So it's super, super easy to do experiments like this with egg proteins. Um, if any of you are following along or maybe doing this after this live stream has ended, I encourage you all to use different acids and bases and solutions that you might find around your house. Some fun ones that I've played with are lemon juice, orange juice, other citrusy things, because so those have citric acid in them, which can be pretty powerful. So it's always fun to play around with those. I do want to note, though, if you are going to use different acids and bases and perhaps solvents that I didn't use, Today, always make sure that you ask a parent if it's okay and perhaps have some parental supervision when you're mixing them together. Um, so a couple of you were wondering why uh, it's important to denature proteins or why we care about denaturing proteins. There's two reasons why, and I want you folks to take a guess at why it is important to understand why proteins denature. Someone asked if it's edible. Uh, no, I would not eat anything that I made right now. Uh, remember, we do not eat science at Supernova. So can you folks guess why it's important to understand why proteins denature? Someone said because then you can uncover DNA. That's on the right track of what I'm looking for. to make them edible, digestible. Perhaps if you're looking at it from a food science perspective, so looking at how heat can denature proteins like we did with eggs, or if you heat up meat and it turns white or it turns brown because all those proteins are denaturing, that is a, definitely a good reason why we want to understand why proteins denature because you want to know if you eat it or not. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something else. Oh, I see it. Mary Kate said to find medicines. Absolutely. That is one of the key reasons why we uh, want to understand protein denaturation, because we want to learn how proteins act with different solutions. So I put my egg whites and my proteins in a bunch of different materials today. And that's what a lot of scientists do in the lab is they check the interactions between different materials and different proteins. And that allows them to create new medicines and new drugs uh, to help society. So that's one of the main reasons why we want to understand this. There is one more reason. It's a little more close than you would think. Maybe think about inside yourself. Why would we want to understand or why is it important that proteins denature? Anika? 
chances. I see someone saying, understand the DNA. That is a pretty good guess and pretty much what I'm looking for. So if you folks haven't gotten to DNA in science class already, that's okay. I'm gonna give you a little crash course lesson on DNA right now. So what happens is I mentioned earlier, our DNA has a double helix, or it means it's two strands wound together. But in order for DNA to replicate, what needs to happen is it needs to unfold and unwind. So our A proteins today, once they're unfolded, they can't really go back to their original shape, but our DNA can. It has to unravel and kind of open up in order for it to be copied and uh, replicated. And then it kind of uh, zips itself back there or zips itself to a new strand so it can go back and forth. Uh, so protein denaturation is super, super important inside of our bodies and for a lot of different biological processes. So I want to open up the chat now to a little bit of Q&A for maybe about five minutes because that's the end of the experiment right now. Um, you folks certainly don't have to stay for the rest of the Q&A if you don't want. Um, that is all the experiment I have for you and I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you all have fun trying it yourself. Um, but if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Just remember that the chat is just for Q&A right now. So let's keep it appropriate and keep it uh, streamlined to Q&A. So if you have any questions for me, ask them now. So someone said, do only solutes work on egg whites? I think you might mean solvents, because solute is what is dissolved, and solvent is what dissolves. Not, solvents aren't the only thing that work on egg whites, because remember, if you heat it up with just regular water, it can, uh, it can denature the protein. So the temperature is actually the factor that um, changes the conformation at that point. So not only solvents are, uh, will work, you can use a lot of different other things. Someone asked, what is stronger, pop or orange juice? That's a really good question. Um, it kind of depends on what kind of pop you're talking about. Um, so if you're talking about dark pop, they typically have a pretty strong pH and orange juice has citric acid, which is also a very strong acid. So it, it depends on what you're looking at. If we were talking about lemon juice instead of orange juice, I would argue that lemon juice is a stronger acid um, just because the uh, because of the citric acid that is present. Tatiana wants to know, what does your DNA mean? So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And what that is, is just the genetic code that makes us up. So everyone has their own DNA and uh, it's what makes us us. So someone asked full form of DNA. So just uh, to repeat that, it's deoxyribonucleic acid. How do I know that? Um, I know that because I studied a lot of science in university so, um, and in high school. So I know some of these concepts from studying them so much. So I see a few folks um, wonder or saying that they have to leave. That's okay, you're welcome to leave at any point. Thank you for tuning in. Um, someone wants to know what degree of science I did. So I did my Bachelor of Science in Psychology with a minor in Sociology. So doing a Bachelor of Science in Psychology, I learned a lot about the brain and all of the things that happen up there. Um, but I also uh, studied things like I took classes on biology, I took classes on chemistry. Um, and then my minor of Sociology, I studied culture, so I studied people as a whole. So I studied a lot of different things in university. Someone is wondering what if you mix uh, the isopropyl alcohol in boiling water and then added the egg. So what would happen there is your proteins would definitely denature. I do not recommend heating up isopropyl alcohol. Please do not do that. But hypothetically, if you were to add uh, isopropyl alcohol in boiling water, it absolutely would break down the proteins and cause them to denature because the temperature is already going to be breaking those hydrogen bonds and then you're going to have the added effect of the alcohol breaking down those membranes. 
Someone's wondering what medicines use egg protein. I'm not entirely sure what specific medicines use egg protein because oftentimes scientists in labs use a bunch of different uh, proteins. So they might use it from eggs, they might use it from animals, from insects. Um, it, it's not specific to eggs. Um, so I can't really give you an, a clear answer on that one right now, unfortunately. Someone is wondering if bi is biology fun? Biology was super fun when I took it in university because we got to use a lot of different equipment in the labs. So I got to do things like dissections and I got to do labs where I mixed different organic compounds together and uh, got to wear fun stuff like a lab coat and safety goggles and glasses. And I felt like a real scientist when I was in those labs. It was super, super cool. When I was in my upper year of university and second year, I actually took a cell biology lab and I grew human liver cells on a uh, plate over the course of a couple weeks. And then what I did was I ran electricity through them and caused them to separate. And then I stained them with antibodies and caused them to glow or fluoresce. And I looked at that under a microscope. So I made them glow blue and I made them glow green, which was pretty cool. Ella is wondering if I make a cake at Supernova, can I eat it? No, the answer is no, no, nothing we make at Supernova we eat or drink because everything we do at Supernova has to do with science and all of our uh, creations are made in experiments. So we definitely do not eat or drink anything that we make. What happens if I mix dark soda? Hmm, I'm not quite sure on what you mean by that question. If you mean if I mix dark pop, um, perhaps with an egg, we will probably see some protein denaturation just because it has that phosphoric acid into it. Um, if you were to mix it with, say, like, if you were to heat up dark soda, do not do that. I'm just speaking hypothetically. If you were to heat up dark soda, it would also cause denaturation faster just due to the heat uh, breaking those hydrogen bonds. So someone's wondering what are acids and bases related to chemistry or biology? They're actually related to both, which is a fun thing. So there's also a field of science called biochemistry, um, which is a combination of the two fields. So we use acids and bases a lot in chemistry because you need to understand uh, how different chemicals react with each other because a lot of uh, chemicals and substances have a pH level to them. So we need to understand if they're going to react in any way with other substances. And then in biology, they're also used because there's a lot of acids uh, and basic materials that are found inside of our bodies. So we need to understand that sort of thing as well. Um, wondering what happens if you mix lime juice with egg white. So lime juice also has some pretty powerful citric acid in it. So I would, su I would suspect that the proteins would denature in an egg white. If you're going to try this experiment at home, I definitely recommend trying lime juice because you might see some pretty cool uh, things form in your cup. How many things did I add to the science experiment? So today I used six different um, materials. I used cold water to start. Then I did a baking soda water solution. I then used a salt water solution. I then used dark pop, I used vinegar, and I used isopropyl alcohol. So I added those six things to a cup of egg white. So what happens if you mix dark soda with orange juice? So what's going to happen? You're going to have phosphoric acid and you're going to have citric acid together. Um, you're probably not going to see a reaction just with those two things because they're not going to cause a neutralization of any sort. You might see the pop fizz up a little bit, but it will go down. And what's going to happen then? You're probably going to have a pretty chunky, gross mixture of orange juice and pop. Um, and if you would add an egg white to that, you would probably see some denaturation because you have two acids working there. But I cannot guarantee that. What can be used to find acids and bases? So that is a really good question. Acids and bases can be found all over your house. Some common acids are vinegar, lemon juice, orange juice, lime juice. A lot of uh, cit citrus or juices typically have acids in them. Pops have acids in them, um, especially dark pops because the phosphoric acid. Um, bases, 
Uh, a lot of people don't know where to find bases, uh, but I can tell you some common ones. Dish soap and hand soap are a really good example of basic things because they break down grime molecules on your hands when you wash them. Super important to wash your hands. You can also use baking soda as a base. Toothpaste is a good example of a base. Um, your parents might know if you have an upset tummy or if your parents have an upset stomach, sometimes they eat something called an antacid and that, that is also an example of a base because uh, it neutralizes the acid inside of your stomach. Another example of a base, a lot of cleaning products are basic just because they break down the grime molecules. So uh, shampoo is a good example of another base. Someone's wondering if sanitizer is a base. That's a really good question. Sanitizer contains a lot of alcohol, so it's actually a solvent. It's not, it's not really an acid or a base. It uh, kind of acts in, similar to the isopropyl alcohol that we uh, use today. If I added Sprite and apple juice, what would it do? So what we would see then is apple juice, there's a good chance that apple juice lies on the acidic side of the pH scale, but I'm not 100% sure, but typically fruit juices are acidic. Um, and Sprite, if it has carbonation, there's a good chance it's going to have phosphoric acid in it. Um, if you mix them together, you're probably going to see a little bit of bubbling from the Sprite, just having something added to it, but you're not going to see a reaction uh, like you might think. But if you add an egg white to it, you might see the proteins denature. But I, I wouldn't expect it just because I don't think the acid would be strong enough in that case. So I'm gonna give you folks about one more minute to ask any final questions that you might have, um, just because we are running to the end of our time here and I wanna make sure everyone can get on with their day and perhaps even attempt this experiment at home. I'm not seeing any more questions coming in. So I am going to, uh, oh, I see one final question. Is acid common? Yeah, acids are super common. They can be found all over the place, in our house, in our bodies, in the natural world. Acids and bases are everywhere. So I think uh, that's going to bring us to the end of our session today. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I had a great time doing this experiment with you and I had a great time uh, talking to you all and answering your questions. And it was really cool to see you all get excited about all of the things we were seeing today. So uh, be sure to check your emails. And if you are part of the Google Classroom, make sure to log on to that because I will be posting that video there and also sending out this video to those who are not part of that. So you folks can try this experiment at home. So have a great day, everyone. It was uh, nice connecting with you.